Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. I think that one of the most valuable utilities you can run in your home lab is one that allows you to store and retrieve important documents. So today I wanted to talk about Paperless NGX and Paperless NGX is an open source document management system that transforms your physical documents into a searchable online archive. And what I really like about it is that you can scan in documents that are simply um, images of things. And what it will do is it will OCR those documents and it will add searchable indexes to them, even if you've only scanned in an image. So you can have your source documents, something you've scanned in, or you can also take a document that may be of an electronic form, but it's not necessary for it to be a Word or an Excel document, but certainly you can upload something like that as well. And Paperless supports PDF documents, images, plain text files, and Office documents like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Libre Office type documents and many more. So let's go take a look at how to install Paperless NGX. Paperless NGX is a Docker application, but we're going to install it nested in an Incas container. And if you're unfamiliar with Incas, it's a very lightweight and efficient virtualization system. And if you go watch my video entitled Incas Container Step-by-Step, -step, you'll learn all about how to install and set up an Incas server. So here we have Incas Launch Images, colon Ubuntu 2404. I'm naming the container Paperless NGX. I'm using the default profile and the bridge profile that I introduced in Incas Container Step-by-Step. -step. I'm setting boot.autostart equals to true and security.nesting equal to true since we're nesting a Docker application inside of an Incas container. Let's start out by connecting into the shell of the paperless NGX container. And the first thing you should do anytime that you access a new container is an apt update to make sure that all the repositories are currently up to date. And then we have a couple of dependencies that we want to install. And those are going to be curl, nano, net-tools, and open SSH server so we can manage our paperless NGX installation later on. Now that we have some of those dependencies installed, we're going to go ahead and install Docker from the script on the Docker website with a curl command. Now that Docker's installed, let's go ahead and add myself a user account with an add user Scott. We'll give Scott a password. And then we'll go ahead and add Scott into the pseudo group with the user mod A capital G pseudo Scott. And we'll also add Scott into the Docker group so that when we execute Docker commands, we will not need to use sudo. Now let's go ahead and su over to the Scott account with an su space dash space Scott, which not only moves us over to the Scott account, but moves us over to the Scott default directory, which is Scott at paperless ngx, paperless ngx being the name of the server. Next, I wanna go ahead and make a folder called paperless ngx, and then I'm going to CD inside of Paperless NGX. We're going to need two configuration files for Paperless NGX, and the first one will be the Docker Compose file. So we'll go ahead and do a nano docker composeyml and I'll go ahead and paste that information into that file. And all this will be in the show notes. 
There are multiple Docker containers for Paperless NGX, beginning with the broker that you see here at the top, followed by the database. And in the database, you can leave the database name and the database user the same, being Paperless, but you'll want to change the Postgres password here to some value that will be more secure. I'm just going to leave it at Postgres password for now. The third container you have is the web server. And if we move down in the web server, we'll see that it also has an environment section here. And whatever you change the paperless or the Postgres password to above in the database section, you'll want to change it to be the same value down here. The next container we have is something called Gothenburg and it is a uh, container that is used to do some of the intelligent analysis. And then we have this Tika container down here. Once you have made the changes to the Postgres password in both locations, do a control O and enter to write the file out and a control X to exit the nano editor. The second file that we want to create here is going to be docker-compose.env. And I'll go ahead and paste its values in it. And so if we run to the top of the file, the first thing we'll notice here is the user map under bar UID and user map under bar GID. When you create an Incas container, by default, you get an Ubuntu account with the user ID of 1000 and a group ID of 1000. But when I created my username that I intend to manage this application with, and I created username Scott, it's created under user ID 1001 and group ID 1001. And that's why I have that here in green. As we go down the page, the other thing you're going to want to change is going to be your paperless URL, which here I have as paperless.yourdomain.com. So you're going to want to go out to your DNS provider and set up a subdomain for your paperless instance since it's a web-based application and it will be accessible on the public internet but will be secured by usernames and passwords. And you can also have multiple accounts at the same time and grant different users access to different documents. The next thing you want to do here is this paperless underbar secret underbar key, where you're going to set it to a string of random characters. And I simply have here a string of random characters. And then you can set your time zone. And I think we had our time zone set up also in the uh, main document. And that really is just about it here. I'll go ahead and uncomment the time zone since I want to set it. So I'll do a control O and enter to write the file out and a control X to exit the nano editor. To download the container overlays and start paperless NGX for the first time, you're going to want to do a Docker space compose space up dash D, and it will begin pulling the database, Gothenburg, web server, Tika, and broker containers. And after it gets done pulling all of the container overlays, it will start the application. Now that the application is started, we can do a docker space ps, and you'll see that we have all of the containers in the process of starting, and they're not quite up and running yet. I'll reduce the size of this just a little bit so that it does not wrap around. And with any luck, there we go. And I know this is sort of a eye chart, but it's trying to finish starting the application. We'll do another Docker PS, and it still says that it's starting, so we need to wait just a little bit longer. And after waiting just a minute or two, I'll do another Docker PS, and there it says that the application is up and running and healthy. 
Let me increase my screen size just a little bit more so we'll be able to see what we're going to do next after we have established that the application's up and running and healthy, the next step we're going to want to do is to create our administrative account. And we do so with the Docker Compose Run and then dash dash RM, which means it removes the container after running and it runs the web server with the parameter create super user. When we do that, it goes ahead and says command not found and that's because that's the old style of docker compose so we'll do a docker space compose run and it should work so it goes ahead and says that it's running and it will say that it is mapping the uid and gid for paperless to 1001 colon 1001 and i should get a prompt here shortly asking for my desired username and password. And now after a couple of minutes, it goes ahead and performs some critical functions in setting up the database. Eventually, it asks for your username and password. I'm going to enter my username as Scott, and then it will ask for my email address, and then it will ask for my password. Oops, my password didn't match. Let's try that again. Good thing they had two prompts. And it says, super user created successfully. Now that I have a super user username, the next step will be to do an if config. And if I look up here, I will find ETH0 and ETH zeros address is 172.16.1.176. I go ahead and launch my web browser and I'll go ahead and hit enter and it will give me the paperless username which I will type in the username that I just set for the super user and the password that I just set and it will go ahead and log in. Now right now I'm running this locally but you can go out and if you had set up the subdomain in the configuration file and you set up paperless NGX in your Nginx proxy manager, you would then have a reverse proxy. But this is accessible inside my network right now and it works just fine. Basically, what you end up doing with this application is you can grab any information that you want and drag and drop it in here. So for example, I have some notes for this particular application and I'll go ahead and drop my note file in here and it says that it is uploading. I can go over here to documents and there is my first document. I could of course have a graphical document and that would be fine if I went ahead and double clicked it it would bring this up and display it for me. Now the thing about this is I realize this is a text document, but it could have just as well been a graphical document and I could do a search here for example, Incas, and it would find the one document that has a reference to Incas in it, which is the only document that I've uploaded here. If I head back up to my dashboard, they have a where you can start a tour and it will explain all the functions of paperless NGX. But other than that, over here it will give you a total of the number of documents you have uploaded along with the amount of storage that those documents are using. And so I'll grab here another document, which will simply be a graphical document. And in this particular case, it is a speed test result that I did on my network. And so I could, for example, search for speed and it would find that one document. And it didn't find it based on the name of the document. It found it based on the fact that speed 
was in the graphical description here. So again, it OCRs the document and it's able to find it based on those contents. The ability to index and cross-reference documents that you've scanned in and have them all in one place and the ability to share them to selected people and then also to have differing user accounts is really valuable. This way you don't have your secure or important documents on your desktop, but instead you have them in this paperless NGX portal that can be individually backed up, maintained, and secured. So in summary, consider going out and installing and investigating all the features and functions of Paperless NGX. It's been a great and powerful application for me. So that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit your notification bell and we'll see you next time.